Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash A-H-T-T. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hard to Tell Podcast, episode 161, the final episode of the year 2020. Now, some of y'all can't wait for the year to be over. I don't know why, because you don't know if 2021 is going to be better. But that's a story to talk about in the new year. This is part... Damn. <laughs> yeah. A little morbid there to start. Not morbid. You don't know if it's going to be better. Be grateful for the day that you have. That's all I, I'm saying. I, I would just say, let you know, let, let optimism just sort of, you know, surface here. I, w- I would let the people want to, you know, think what they want, I guess. Okay. I, I look, look, I, look, I, t- for me, I'm going to do all I can to make sure it's a lot better than 2020. All right? Like- I, look, <laughs> bless, bless, blessed to be breathing, blessed to see today. Yeah. You know, in, in tw- a lot of people in uh, 2019 couldn't wait to see 2020, 2020 vision and all that, but they didn't have the vision to see what was coming. That's all I'm saying. Just saying that. But it is yeah, what it you're is. Not, you're not wrong. I'm yeah. just saying, you know. Yeah. I just... I just prefer to think uh, positively. Okay. <laughs> I have to, uh, whatever. It is what it is. All right. Dex Henry, Brian Fonseca here. This will be uh, the final episode. This is the second part of our Ain't Hard to Tw- Tell podcast, Hip Hop Awards. Part two, we did a little differently this year, as we saw in the previous episode. In part one, uh, we went through all of our awards, uh, sort of individual artists, the year, song of the year, that kind of thing. If you haven't listened to that, you can go back and listen to that. This is going to be our top 10 albums of the year. This is what we're waiting for. As we mentioned in the last episode, we have moved this from five, top five to top 10, as per requested by Brian, because he wanted to get more, <laughs> and he's just so indecisive that this he could not pick five. By the way, this is our 57th episode of the calendar year, 2020. Yeah. I just want to put that out there. 57 yeah. episodes. 57 this episodes this Let's year. Let's go us. <laughs> working, working hard through a pandemic. Uh, so we're going to go through our top 10 episode, top 10 episodes. Huh? That'll be, that's another show for another time. Oh, we're yeah. going to go through our top 10 hip hop albums of the year. Uh, how do you want to start this, Brian? You want me to go first at number 10? You want to go first at number 10? I, 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 I don't know. I, I, like, All I'm right. You go, you list. go first at number 10. You go first at number 10. Both- I, I believe we both have a tie. We both uh, have ties, ties at number 10. At number 10 and let me say this. This is my only tie, this four-way tie that I have at number 10. No, I'm joking. It's not a four-way tie. <laughs> <laughs> but this tie that I have at number 10, it's just two albums, is the only tie I have on my list. And honestly, like, it was very hard to even come up with this tie. Now, I'm going to start off by pissing off some people. Uh, there was one album that I really, really enjoyed, and I was telling Dexter right now. Like, my honorable mention for this list. Can I can I start with the honorable mention, or sure. should I save it? You can go... Ah, uh, let's let's save the honorable mention. Let's save what let's did save it. All right, let's yeah, save yeah, yeah. Let's, we can save that till later on, till we get to number one or yeah. whatever the case may be. Right. Yeah. Um, tie for number ten. Rude Boy, CJ Fly, Static Selector, Static Selector. Why did I say Static Selector? Ew, that was some white shit that I just did right there. <laughs> static Selector on the one and twos. <laughs> no, because no, I was about to laugh. And that came out. But Static Selector, CJ Fly collaboration. Uh, Static Selector was just on the podcast recently. That's an episode that was, I believe, 158. So you should go check that out because we had a lot of fun doing that. Um, look, and that's on, and that's a tie. And the album that is tied with is Coffee and Kush Volume 1 by Problem, West Coast Artist. Compton, California, to be exact. Um, start with the CJ Fly album. This is one that snuck both of these albums similar. I had similar reactions to both of them. They both snuck up on me. Both artists I generally enjoy, CJ Fly, Problem, both totally different kinds of artists, but made similar albums, I guess you would say, where there was a lot of jewels, a lot of life lessons, so to speak. No pun intended, because one of the songs on Problem's album is actually called Life Lessons. It's one of the best songs on that album. One of my favorite songs that I've heard this year. Um, Rude Boy, very interesting uh, track list, too. Uh, Haley Supreme, who Static Select told us about, had a couple great features on this. Grew Up is actually my favorite song on this album uh, by your fellow Flatbush brother. 
Um, yep. Joey Badass, good verse on Rude Boy. Kirk Knight is on this. Conway the Machine, uh, who we may or may not be talking about later on this episode, uh, has a very good verse on here. Dirty Sanchez, Desi Hines, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you know what it is when it comes to like these pro era dudes. And it was just a really good album, something that I really enjoyed that came out earlier this year. Uh, Problem, uh, Coffee and Kush Volume One came out in June. That is the album where. I don't believe in volume one, he had uh, many guests or any guests that I can remember on this album. Uh, he did a Coffee and Kush volume two that had more guests, but that was the album that was really solid to listen um, just all the way through. And you could tell like he was inspired by not just all the stuff that was going on, but there was a deep song about like, you know, just the hood reacting to Nipsey Hussle's death out there on the West Coast and how that it shouldn't have taken that to awoken some folks about the shit that's going on and things like that nature. Like it was just good all the way around. Just a very good listen, uh, especially if you're just working and doing some stuff too. It's a nice chill listen to lean back and just, you know, relax too also. So that's my tie for top 10, uh, for my, the 10th spot rather problem coughing. Cause volume one, CJ fly and static select the rude boy. Okay, nice. I did still did not listen to that problem. Coffee and Kush project. I did listen to the, uh, it's good. Did listen to the CJ Fly and Static. I did like that project. Uh, neither of these albums made my top 10, so we have different ties. My tie in the 10th spot uh, was they're, they're sort of adjacent albums in a way because they're connected through artists. One is from a group and one is a solo uh, of someone from the group. So coming in tied at 10 for me was the Locks album, Living Off Experience, their first release since 2016, uh, Filthy America. And then the tie with that was Jadakiss's solo album, Ignatius, uh, which mm. dropped earlier this year. And I'm going to start with the Jadakiss project first. The Jadakiss project, um, you know, Jadakiss, uh, this was his first project since Top 5, Dead or Alive. Uh, Jadakiss always saying that from time to time, that he is in the Top 5, Dead or Alive. Jadakiss, obviously one of the best rappers to come out of New York and spit. But I've always felt Jadakiss was sort of in this space that Royce the 5'9 was prior to the Book of Ryan, in that he really hadn't made an album where he tapped in to the introspective, the real personal side. And on this one, Jadakiss really did on Ignatius. He really tapped into Ignatius, and a lot of the album talks about uh, the uh, the death of, I'm, I'm forgetting who it is, it's a friend, a friend of him and, and, and the locks, somebody that was close mm-hmm. to him, but that's kind of, uh, excuse me, Ice Pick J, Ignatius Jackson. Uh, who died in 2017, he is featured on the center of the album's cover art, and a lot of the album focuses around his death and the impact that he had on the Locks members, particularly Jadakiss, and he raps a lot about this album, a lot of introspective stuff, a lot of Jadakiss reflecting on his life, and just just a really good song. The lead single on this was really good, Hunting Season with Pusha T. Really liked that song. Production, very solid. Jadakiss is easily the most tightest album in terms of tracks, 13 tracks in this album. Everybody who knows this podcast knows I like an album between 12 and 14 tracks. Just delivered on that. The feature's also really good. A little too feature heavy at the end, but a solid album. This album was also pretty well reviewed. I think a lot of people forgot about it at the top of this year. Probably in that 7.5 to 8 out of 10 range, I would give this album, but a very good listen. I haven't quite revisited as often as I would have liked to. But a really good listen. Mm. And it comes tied in with the Locks album, as I said, their first album since 2016's Filthy America. Another, for the Locks, tighter album than you usually get from them. Filthy America was in that vein. But this, I think, just had better production than Filthy America. Out a little bit longer, there's a really grimy song about shit with DMX, where DMX has a really good verse. And this was what a lot of people got to hear fresh off his, his, fresh off his versus appearance with Snoop. So this was really good. Also, two great produced tracks, one by Static Selector, obviously been on the, on the podcast, Come Back, which is really good, and probably my favorite track on this album and one of my favorite tracks of the year. So we've mentioned Think of the Locks, which featured West Side Gun and Benny the Butcher. This produced by the legendary Large Professor. Just an ill early 90s vibe to this head knocker. There's a lot of that on the album. Now, has the subject matter really evolved for the locks on this album? No, not really. But it's still a really good listen if you like that grimy New York sound. 
that kind of modernized in a way on this album. I thought the locks hit that. A solid listen for them and good to see them evolve slightly in their sound in 2020. So that's my number 10, Ignatius Jadakiss, Living Off Experience a lot. So you haven't checked those out? Check those out. Two albums that I listened to and enjoyed but did not have on my list, but were pretty close. I will say that. Now, they didn't come down to the wire necessarily when uh-huh. it came when it came to some of the other projects, but two albums that I really enjoyed, uh especially the Locks one uh that I heard, you know, this year. Yeah. It was a good it was a good one. All right, who do you got at number 9? Number 9, I have Static Selecta actually. I have Static Selecta the Balancing Act. Uh and this was close because I had it at seven at one point. Shot had had it at ten. There was a lot of shuffling between seven and nine, which we're gonna get to. But Static Selecta, and I'm not gonna you know talk too much about it because this may be on your list somewhere. It's we'll on see. the it's on the list. It's on your list, so it's I'm not gonna get too deeply into it. But keep it moving with Joey Badass, Gary Clark, and Nas was one of the most played songs that I've had this year, according to Spotify's uh, analytics. <laughs> it was in my top 100, and it was very high on the top 100. Repeated it a lot. Uh, the intro with Black Thought uh, was one of was one of my favorite songs on the project. And Black Thought, anytime that he's just allowed to just rap, <laughs> you know, for it's however gonna be long, crazy. Right? Yeah, like I'm always here for it. Um, Allen Kingdom, Two Chains, Conway, Killer Mike on the third joint play around. Like I thought that this this album was among the best to start in terms of like the first you know eight or so tracks. It was one of the best runs that I've heard from an album this year. I still like some stuff on the back end, but it was so strong on the front. Watch me with Joey Badass. Uh, since it's on your list, I'm gonna let you talk about that because I know how much you love that joint. I love that joint, uh, and one of my favorite songs in this album, as I mentioned, the Static Selector, as I mentioned, the Static Selector while he was here, was the Dave East and Method Man joint that they did together called Hard Living, was a song that I really enjoyed as well. Um, and speaking of the locks, Jada Kiss, Styles P, and, and uh, not Chic Loose, but Terminology are on a song called America's Cancel, and Terminology has one of the better features that I've heard in hip hop all year this year. Uh, Benny the Butcher on another very good song with Brady Watt and Paul Wall. That was another song I really enjoyed. Yeah. So yeah, Static Selecta, who makes these kind of compilation albums better than anybody else, including DJ Khaled, no disrespect, but he just does. And it's rare that I feel like a compilation album like this uh, sort of makes a list like this. You know what I mean? But I think that it was that good this year. It was one of Static Selecta's, I think, best projects. Yeah, it's rare for me that the compilation album makes the list, and it made it for mine. I'll get to that a little bit later. But it's it's very rare because usually it's all over the place. So we kind of talked about this when Static came on, and we talked about it even before he come on the podcast. He's just really good at actually having a theme and, and actually executing it among all these artists. So yeah, definitely one of the best projects of the year. For me at number nine, uh, I had an album. This album came out, I believe, let me just recheck on the date, the release of this. The album was released. It's funny, this year's been so long. Okay, it was early June. It's June 3rd. Uh, and it came out two days earlier than it was supposed to. And this is Run the Jewels 4, uh, the fourth studio album by the American hip hop duo. <laughs> why, why, you show, why that reaction? I was shocked that, that made your list because I didn't know. So <laughs> yeah, why did you? That, that was my big honorable mention omission one of them at least uh, that i almost since you mentioned it i'm just gonna mention it now that was my big honorable mention that i i almost put it on the album and i think if we're being objective it's probably better than coffin Kush volume one and the rude boy album but i do have personally i do have more skips on the album than those other two uh, as much as I do like that Run of Jewels album, there are a few. They have a few of my favorite songs of the year, including the DJ Premier one. But yeah, yeah. Well, starting off with that, that was the first single off of this. This was Ooh La La uh, with DJ Premier and Greg Nice. Um, obviously, the sample on the song, a fantastic sample off of Dwick, legendary Gangstar song, uh, sampling Greg Nice uh, on it. The video was actually really dope. Uh, this album was a good listen. Look, when you you, you come to uh, Run the Jewels album, you're going to get bars. You're going to get different variations of production. Very loud, stadium-sounding-esque production that's really meant to amp up a crowd. And it was, it was solid. This was a really solid listen. There's some stuff sonically I didn't love at certain points in the album, but the highs of this album were really, really good. Ooh La La, I mentioned, Just with Pharrell. And Zach De La Roca, 
one of my favorite songs of the years. Great hook. Look at all these slave masters posing on your yeah. dollars. Dope. Yeah. Just absolutely. I heard it today like three times. Yeah. I love that song. I love the beat. Uh, just, just dope. Pharrell was a great touch on it. Again, nice listen for this album. 11 tracks, just under 39 minutes. Really good listen. You get great bars from Killer Mike and LP, who's always stepping his game up. And just the production by LP on this, really good and solid. A really solid listen. Run the Jewels, you know, in terms of that, just delivering as they normally do. I don't think maybe this is some of the bangers you've seen on Run the Jewels 1 and 2, but this has a lot of good songs, a lot of good sounds. And I think it's a really good listen for somebody maybe looking for a little bit more variety in their hip-hop listening. So I, I had to put this in my list. I think in the beginning of the year, around the time it was released, it was probably in my top five. However, as the year Same. went on, and we there were other albums that came that I thought just passed it, it, it dropped down. And this, but, but this is by no means degrading this album or saying that it's not worthy. It just got outshone by some albums that I think were a lot better as the year went on. And just passed it down. But but Run the Jewels 4, good album. Brian had it on the outside looking in. I had it in at number nine. It was top five earlier. I believe, yeah. I believe that too, for sure. Well, we'll get to why in a We'll bit. get to why. We'll get to we'll get to the why. All right, what do you have at number eight? Uh number eight, I have an album that I'm also gonna let you talk about when it comes to it because this is a and I'm only giving that away because this is an album that you actually put me on to earlier in the year, and I heard it and it was really good. Um, and it's higher on my list than I thought it would probably be at one point. But uh, D Smoke, Black Habits. Okay. D Smoke, Black Habits, number eight. Um, whose Spanish is better than mine, though I'm working on it. And I have <laughs> Uh <laughs> Seriously, I've gotten a lot better, uh, finally. But yeah, like it was just a really good listen all the way through. I was thoroughly impressed because this is a newer artist. I think he was he from Rhythm and, Rhythm and Flow on Netflix? He, he was a winner of Rhythm and Flow. And I and I rare I am not a big competition show watcher. I think I talked about this in the podcast. Yeah, I'm not a big competition show watcher, but in terms of competition, I generally think sometimes they don't get the person who actually won it. They got the best rapper and most talented artist, and they got it right. There was a probably a guy in the show that I think might have been able to out rap it, but he was not a better rapper in terms of a song maker. And D Smoke showed me a lot where I was like, oh, he's a song maker. And then following him winning the show, before you go in, I will let people know this, I found out that his brother is Sir on TDE, and his cousin, uh, uh, who, I, who I know and has produced some music for Backpack Broadcasting, is Iman Omari. And I, and, I, and I found out, I said, oh, this guy comes from a very musical-ass family that really understands arrangement and song making, so you kind of saw where it came from and the talent. Now, the yeah. thing, and I'll bring this up to Brian, because I didn't know he loved the album as much, but a lot of things you hear a lot of people say is, he sounds like Kendrick. And I get yeah. I get some of that too. There are very Kendrick vibes in his music. I do not think he was biting. I just think they happen to sound the same way. He Kendrick being from Compton, he being from Inglewood, uh, neighborhoods in in LA. I it doesn't bother me because I don't think they sound that much. Did it bother you at all listening to this album because you enjoyed it? But did it bother you? Did you think he sounded a lot like Kendrick? No, because I I could just tell like we're at that age now where Kendrick is in his mid 30s or about to be in his mid 30s like this is clearly someone he's influenced you know what i mean like there are other artists there's a dude on dreamville whose name is escaping me but when i hear him he sounds just like kendrick to me and he's nice i'm forgetting which one it is because there's so many of them dudes and a lot of them can rap but and there's no disrespect i'm just blanking on the name right now but like it, that's what it is right now you know what i mean like in the 2000s you heard a lot of dudes coming out it sounded like Nas or Jay Z from New York. You know what I mean? This is just what it was. Like now, we're gonna start hearing a lot more J. Cole. Cord A sounds like a J. Cole to me. Not a clone necessarily, but I can hear a lot of J. Cole influence there. Sort of the same with you know um, Reason and Kendrick, with D Smoke and Kendrick. Like this is what it is. But with with Black Habits, it was an album I really enjoyed. Uh, I'm looking forward to like what he has to do next, um, yeah, or what he's gonna do next. You know, coming up, even on his first album, like I'm not a dude who like 
you know, sort of look at track lists before the album comes out. And this album kind of snuck up on me, too. But, like, you know, with Sir, with Ari Lennox, with Jill Scott, with Snoop Dogg, like, there's a presence and mm-hmm. a special talent that the album had that he was able to pull from. So I'm excited to see where he go next. But D-Smoke, Black Habits, one of my favorite listens. And, you know, an album that I've been replaying a lot as the year went on makes number eight on my list. All right, number eight on your list. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do, because you've now mentioned – two of the albums that I had on my list. And I'm we're going to mention- start crossing over. Yeah, a lot. this is going to, so we're going to be able to jump ahead a little bit. So I'm going to go with two for one here. I'm going to do eight and seven for me because Brian's already talked about yeah. both these albums. Number eight for me was the balancing act static selector. Love the album. As I said, compilation album that actually worked well, good concept, really great artists, great production of using from static standout songs for me. Where all the songs Brian mentioned, we pretty much like a lot of the same songs. So it standouts for me. Uh, my standout of the album for me is Watch Me with Joey Badass. I thought it was a fantastic song there and really excited to see what Static does next with Joey, including Joey's upcoming project that we're all, all awaiting and probably will not get till 2021. Very excited about that. But Brian, you hit all the nails on the right head. Static is just the best at doing this right now in terms of compilation albums that are very uh, easy to listen to and also the respect of a lot of the great spitters in this game right now that just respect Static and want to work with him. So shout out to Static for that. I'm generally not a big fan of compilation albums in general, but he's one. He's the one person that I always will go to to listen because I just love his production and the artists he'll get to work with. Number seven for me was the album you just talked about, Black Habits by D Smoke. This is another album for me. Like Run the Jewels was in the top five when the year began. This dropped in February, I believe, February 7th. It dropped. I remember listening to this very heavily before the pandemic, especially on some trips I was taking throughout the month of February. It was a very timely album around Black history, very conscious album. I love the last song on this on this album, Black Habits 2. Just a fantastic song to close the album. Brian, you talked about the features, the people we worked with, the production. This is an artist, a rapper who's come on the scene. I liked his EP last year, Inglewood High. And I think that he is very aware of his voice, his song-making ability, his song structure. He knows better than most musicians coming in because of his musicality and his family. And I encourage anybody, if you haven't watched Rhythm and Flow and see what he did through the contest, you'll just see, you can see he was light years ahead of everybody in terms of making songs. It's unfair. This, yeah, it's unfair. <laughs> this was shown this was shown on the album and it's a really good body of work. It has a couple skips, think it could have been a little bit tighter, but a yeah, really I- good body of work. The messages are strong, the rapping is really good. Sometimes I think a criticism might have a D smoke. I like the fact that he can rap in Spanish and he does it. Sometimes it's overdone a little bit too much on on songs after a while. I love I love that shit though. I, I you know what? And I but- and I get it. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. speaking to you in a different way. I, sometimes I'm like, I don't know what he's saying, but it sounds good. I also encourage anybody, if you can... That's the beauty of Spanish. Yeah. Not all languages sound good. That's true. Have you ever heard that, someone try to speak German on a yeah, record? It does, yeah, it doesn't really sound that great. No. <laughs> it's a little harsh on the ears, I'll say. Yeah, yeah. No, no disrespect to my German peoples out there, but it could be a little harsh on the ears. I think they would say that. But yeah. if you have not seen, if you do not know the skills of D-Smoke, then I highly encourage everybody to go and watch the L.A. Leakers freestyle he did this year over the Rosa Parks beat. Woo! He killed that. You sent me that. I I sent you that. that. Not not only does he start spitting that fire in English, he then closes a cappella in Spanish. And, yeah, it's... Spanish is solid. It's it's solid. No, he's good. Bilingual, bilingual rapper, and he's killing, flowing, and he's seamlessly... Can rap in between English and Spanish. It's just seamless. It's very seamless. I don't seamless. even think he's a lot to know either. I think he just grew up around, like, you know, the Mexicans in California, had a bunch of Mexican friends, and just sort of picked it up when he was little. And if I'm That's not mistaken, he was, I believe he was teaching it as well, too. I know he was a teacher at, at Inglewood That's- High. I believe he was teaching it too, if I'm not mistaken. But I, like, I, I'm letting you know right now, as a you know, member of the Latino delegation, like, we're claiming him. Like, that's it. You that's know what fine. I mean? Like, hey, we're going we're gonna to share. On, on D Smoke, you know what I'm saying? Just like we do on like David Ortiz, Manny Ramirez, you know what I mean? Like that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. We're <laughs> gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna represent. So yeah, that was eight for me, seven for me. All right, we skipped that to move through that. What'd you have at seven? What was seven for you? 
an album that was also in my top 10, I think even top three because it came out so early in the year, but since dropped off because of some projects that we're going to mention later. The Price of Tea in China by Boldy Holy James, James and The Alchemist. This came out in February. So mm-hmm. this might have even been my album of the year very early on at one point. But this was an album where, like, it's kind of like that Rock Marciano style rap, except I think he does a little bit better. But we'll get to that another time. That will be another discussion <laughs> for another day. Yes. But uh, it was really, this was, this was an impressive body of work. You know what I mean? With Caruth, Giant Slide was a song that I love. Surf and Turf with an excellent Vince Staples verse. One of the best I like verses that song a lot. from Vince Staples in a long time. And when Vince Staples like wants to rap, like he can like you've heard it on Kingdom, on the common song that he did a few years ago. You've heard it on obviously some of his own joints. You heard it on what was the song he did with uh Earl Sweatshirt? Doesn't matter. But it was uh it, like he when he wants to rap, he can really do it among the best run ins. Run ins uh with Boldy James was actually one of my favorite songs that I've heard this year. Uh my favorite song from this album, Scrape the Bowl with Betty the Butcher, I thought it was a very good joint. Like wow. there's a lot of yeah. slow roll, snort with Freddie Gibbs, like and it's very tight. It's just twelve tracks. I wanna say it's in the low thirties in terms of minutes. Um, evidence has a feature on here and I haven't heard evidence in a minute, but like, yo, this was very impressive. And it was good to hear Bully James again, because like, we also heard of uh, later on because he had an EP uh, called Versace later on. And he's with Griselda records now, which is also fascinating. And he's going to be doing some stuff there, but this was a hella impressive album. One of my favorites this year, run-ins was my favorite song from it and it was on my list of songs for song of the year but it was bumped out uh in the process but just so you know where i stand with that but number seven on my list boldy james alchemist the price of tea in china one of my favorite listens from 2020 all right number seven for you with that i really did like that album alchemist obviously up there in our producer of the list uh producer of the year category uh, he's on that. He'll be on a, talk about another project. I'm sure we both will talk about later that he had a huge role in. For me, it's number six for me. I have a feeling that this album for me is going to be lower than it is for you. You may be a little bit surprised at why I have this a bit lower than you, but I can. I think I'm going to be able to see where the sort of bump shift happened, or what the changing point was for me and you. I will get to what album probably pushed this down a little bit for me that didn't do it for Brian. This album for me is From a King to a God, Conway. Yeah, see, look at your face. Ah, yeah. From a King to a God. And here's the thing. Number six. Yeah. I really like this album. I really like this. This was tough. It's not disrespectful to Conway. Higher on my list, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I knew it was higher on your list. Um, I really like this album. This is the debut studio album from Conway. Uh, his Shady Records debut. I think Conway, who we've talked about in terms of a lot of the members of Griselda, and this will also go into when we talk about Benny's album that dropped this year. Yeah. Conway really, to me, took the balance of what I wanted to see him do in balancing the street with the introspection. And he did this. I've often compared Conway a lot to Beanie Siegel. I like his music in that vein, in that style. They can give you that gutter, but they can give you that real good street knowledge and introspective. And I thought Conway did it on this album. 14 tracks on the regular edition. There's now been a deluxe edition, which I have yet to listen to any of the deluxe tracks, but I will after we're done recording this podcast. I've not done that yet. So we are not we are not counting the deluxe edition, which has some production from Darringer, Rock Marciano, who we mentioned, Ninth Wonder. Uh, I will check that out. But the regular edition, 14 tracks, 49 minutes, very nice listen. Got your, you, it did not lose the Griselda sound on this. This has production from Heat Boy. You've got Derringer and Beat Butcher all over this. You've got The Alchemist, one of my favorite tracks in here, Doe and Damani. Woo, love that beat. Just abs- absolutely great. You got Havoc production on here. We, uh, you got DJ Premier. You got Crisis. This is a really good album, and it's been very critically reviewed, reviewed well, which is why it pained me to put it down 
as low as number six. And I'm probably propping this up more to let you know how much I like this or how much I've played this more than you actually would think. It really flows well all the way through. It is probably hard for me to find certain songs I haven't gone back to to really replay. I would say on the lower end of liking songs this album, it's probably Fear of God with Dej Loaf, although I like that song. I'm just saying it's on the lower end. This also is an album that's interludes. Most people know me. No, I don't really care for skips. I'm not holding that against Conway on this album. I think that the skips matter. This was following the death of DJ Shea. They were well done with a nice touch, placed where they were on the album and the importance. This is why this album also got pushed back, I believe, two weeks. Really good song. Brian talked about Forever Dropping Tears as one of the best songs this year with El Camino. Really good. You got your Benny and your West Side joint on Spurs 3. Really, 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 really grimy hard beat. One of my favorite songs of the year, also on this scene, Everything But Jesus, between Fred, with him and Freddie Gibbs. I also think it should be noted that Freddie Gibbs and Conway have excellent chemistry on, on tracks. Yes. We also saw this on Babies and Fools. We'll touch on that later. On Freddie Gibbs' project, Alfredo, they have really great chemistry on tracks that I think just works really well. But look, this is a good listen. If you're looking for some hard edge of the street that's a little bit balanced out, If like I said, if you're a fan of someone like Beanie Siegel like I was, I think this is a listen, a good listen for you. It is one of the best albums of the year. Please do not be deterred by me putting this at number six. It just means there were things I think that were better than this. But this is, but this is the, this is where we're now getting into this. I would say higher territory of albums of the year that we're talking about, and this is one of them for me. And I got to give Conway a huge salute because I think, as I said, I think he found a really good balance of what he wants to do and what he can be as an artist. While varying his production a little bit, but not losing that gritty, raw Griselda sound. Now, I'm going to have something at number six, because I'm at number six now uh, as well. I'm going to have something at number six that, similar to you, this is an album you're going to have higher on your list. This This is also an album that I love, and I try to get it in the top five. But I feel like my top five has been pretty impenetrable uh, for several weeks. So it pained me to leave this out the top five because I really do like this album. And I love this artist because he's one of the best to ever do it. Uh, number six is Strange of Thought, volume three. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and see, the sh- this is where the shift comes in his pocket. It's very interesting. Very interesting. No, okay. I love. Listen, listen. This album is great. Like, I loved it. Stay Prisoner was the song of the year candidate for me. Good Morning was one of my favorite records uh, on the album, and was a song I played a lot. I like Portugal, the man, and I was glad to see him on this album. See them on, see them on here on a couple of different joints. Stake him with Schoolboy Q was a song that pleasantly surprised me as one of my favorite songs on the album. Thought versus Everybody was both a verse of the year and song of the year candidate for me. You know what I mean? And then Fuel is a song that I love that's toward the end. A couple skits I probably didn't need, and maybe one or two songs I probably could do without, but I love this album. And like Dexter, don't be deterred that I have it at number six. Uh, But Black Thought is in shape, very much in shape. Everything that he's spitting on right now, he's he's as good as anybody and has been as good as as anybody for a long time right now. Um... I love what he's doing on his solo tip. And, you know, he also got good features here, too. Killer Mike, Pusha T, Swiss Beats. Uh, mentioned Portugal the Man already. Mentioned Schoolboy Q. Like, this was an album that I wasn't surprised at how great it was as I was making the list. I was surprised. I was like, I was expecting it to be three, four, something along those lines. And I was surprised that I got it. I could only get it to six. But... Like, that's what it was for me. But Black Thought, as good as anybody right now. I'm going to let you touch more on that album later. But, you know, now now we're at the top five, and I'm very excited because I'm going to start the top five off. Not now, but I'm saying I'm go- when I get to my fifth album, I think that's an album that's going to be uh, very surprising. But, you know, we'll see. You know we like to hook our listeners up from time to time. And we have a hookup for you today. So for the listeners of the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. You can check out one of my favorite sports books, $40 Million Slaves, The Rise, Fall, and Redemption 
of the Black Athlete by William C. Roden. That's available on audible.com with hundreds of thousands of other books that you can listen to today. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com backslash A-H-T-T. Again, that's audibletrial.com backslash A-H-T-T for your free audiobook. All right, let's kick off the top five now. At number five, I had Brian's guy, his guy, Freddie Gibbs with Alfredo. (laughs) This this at one point was definitely number two for me. A lot of people have this at number one. It definitively was number two for me for a while. This was an album that was surprising. It was a surprise release. Nobody expected it. Freddie Gibbs just announced, released the track 1985, the first track on the album out of nowhere. This was back in, what was that? Was that May? When, when this dropped? It was May, May 29th. It was end of May, right? Early, uh, early in the pandemic. Yeah, May 29th, early pandemic. He drops 1985. Brian and I are talking about this. We're like, Yo, this sounds great. This is coming off of Bandana. If you remember Bandana last year, Brian had this as his album of the year. I had it as my as number two in album of the year. We both thought Freddie Gibbs had a great year. and everybody's wondering what he can do next coming off of bandana and freddie gibbs delivers with a very tight 35 minute five second album 10 tracks all produced by the great alchemist and some fantastic production this is one this is right there's one of the best produced projects of the year it is not i wouldn't say the best but i could make an argument it is probably the third best produced project of the year if i want if i want to say to probably also done by one artist Really good features on this album. You got Rick Ross, although that's probably the weakest of the features on here. <laughs> Benny the Butcher, Tyler the Creator, arguably the most surprising and probably best feature on here. And then Conway the Machine. Those songs I mentioned, the last two, something to rap about featuring Tyler the Creator, which is easily one of my favorite songs of this year. Fantastic production. And Babies and Fools featuring Conway. Just really good. I think the album has maybe two songs in it that I really would skip. It's a really good listen production-wise. Gibbs, I mentioned this last year at the end of the year. Freddie Gibbs has really found his growth as a rapper in his song making. And you can really see it. He is able to delve into more topics. He has gotten more personal. You might see that as a trend with me as a fan of hip-hop. I like when people can get a little bit more personal, a little bit more vulnerable. Instead of just rapping some gangster stuff, I like that too. But also the ability to open up and make better songs. I think that is definitely shown on something to rap about, Babies of Fools. Really, really good songs you you can see on this album. This, like Bandana, following Bandana, has excited me about what is next to come from Freddie. What is he next going to do with Mad Lib? Who else is he going to work with? What other producers can we see him work with as he's been varying more of his production in that way? I think for a rapper that I used to make a lot of jokes on this podcast, not at Freddie Gibbs. It wasn't I disliked Freddie Gibbs. I think everybody knows that. But maybe I didn't see the, the full potential. I think what I've seen from him in the last couple of years and the way he's worked on projects has been absolutely impressive. They've been projects I really enjoy and go back to. I'm still going back to him bumping Bandana. I'm still playing Alfredo. I think these projects are really, really good. And I think Freddie Gibbs has, has found his lane in the, if you want to say, independent underground rap scene and being able to make the music that he wants to make and being able to lean in and be really confident on it. I like to see that. So this was another example of that, him teaming up with a great producer and alchemist. So Freddie Gibbs, Alfredo, number five for me, in which I think is a really good listen for people. You'd like to put it higher, but like I said, I think the things I have coming up for the next four are better than what Freddie did with Alfredo. But Freddie, Alfredo, strong, man, real strong. Now I'm 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 probably gonna double up here because I actually have Alfredo at four, so I can get to that in a second. Okay. But number five, this is an album that this this is an album that I this, let me tell you something. This is how good my top five is, right? This is how much I love my top five. This is the first album that I have on this list that I do not have a skip, none. Eleven joints, I don't have a single skip on this album, right? Now. It came out in September. Okay. 
and it was and it was a surprising it's not the album you're thinking of and it was a surprising quality listen that snuck up on me features on the album actually include someone we just mentioned freddie gibbs the album is called coffee and kush volume Uh two and the artist is problem who by the way was my second artist of the year my runner-up two Nas that I didn't want to mention on the last episode because right. I was like, let me save that for this episode. The only artist that I have with two albums on this list, and it comes from somebody I didn't expect it from. Now, I like Problem. Been listening to him for a while. Probably first listened to him around 2013 because he was on the GTA soundtrack. It was West Coast Heavy, obviously. Mm-hmm. Always comes back to a video game. You know how I do. Of course. Around that same time, he released a joint project called Rosecrans with DJ Quick that I checked out and liked. I was like, oh, okay. So kind of been on my radar a little bit. Didn't know he was putting out music this year. I don't think a lot of people knew they were putting out music this year until the pandemic happened. (laughs) And then, you know, some people felt creative, were bored, whatever the case may be. This album, though, with Keep Your Head being track one, Florence, Just Outside, Life Lessons, You Don't Have to Wait on Me featuring Tyrese, who had an excellent feature. Say what you want about Tyrese, but it was a great feature on this record. For five tracks to start an album this year, it did not get much better than that. Maybe only two other albums I could say that about. Or maybe the the four that are ahead on this list. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Family Ties 2, one of my favorite songs that I've heard this year. Uh, he also has the hilarious Don't Be Mad at Me remix with Freddie Gibbs <laughs> starting off the record. And pretty much stole the show. Snoop Dogg has a verse later on. but And that's probably the weakest song on the album, honestly. Uh, but like Coffee and Kush Volume 2, highly recommend. Between both Coffee and Kush's, the albums put together are basically 60 minutes because one is literally like 31 something, the other one's like 29 something. So, and you're talking about 23 joints. You can listen to one and two right away. Um, one song is a continuation on part two, is a continuation of something that you heard on part one. Mm-hmm. The problem, and he's not like necessarily. He's not rapping better than he's not rapping better than everyone else or whatever. It's just really solid music all the way through. Um with a lot of like jewels or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? Just a lot of just bars like, oh, oh, like that's you know, word up. Like, you know what I mean? Like just a lot of shit that just makes sense. And in the space that we are now, talking about some of the things that are going on this year, talking about some of the things that have been going on in the West Coast, uh, just about, like, you know, people trying to fuck with you, don't let people shit on you, that kind of shit. Like, it was just a really good listen with a lot of good messages inside of it. And I didn't really expect it uh, because I didn't really expect the album. So, you know, I, Problem made two, two top ten albums for me this year. I was very happy with it, especially to have like some some West Coast on this on this list. You know what I mean? Didn't want it to just be an East Coast list so, to show my bias, but you know, hopefully, problem. You know, if, look, if he puts out a volume three next year, I'll be there day one. You'll right be away. there. That's you'll, all I can say. You'll be there to li- you'll be there to listen. All right, so that was that was number yeah. five for you. And number four, like I said, uh, people. Fans of the show, friends of the show, probably would have thought that I would have this album higher on this list. But it is number four, and it is Alfredo, Freddie Gibbs Alchemist, which you just talked at great length about. 1985 was another one. I Look, I had like 10 Song of the Year candidates, all right? Literally 10. I went from 10 and then whittled it down to one, Forever Dropping Tears by Conway. 1985 was high on that list. According to Spotify, 1985, my most played song this year, 2020, which surprised me. Hmm. But... I heard it a lot when it came out and have been revisiting it a lot. It's one of my favorite verses this year. Um, like it, it was, it's probably my favorite record to start an album this year uh, outside of one more that we're going to get to. Yeah. I think, I, I um, think I know which one that is. Yeah. Scotty beam, uh, which as you mentioned, good feature from Rick Ross, though, probably the weakest of the album's bunch, but that's not to say it was a weak feature at all. It was just like, you know, Benny the Butcher was great. Conway and Tyler the Creator had two of the best 10 guest verses in hip hop this year, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I'd, I'd agree really with that. Well, down to it. But Rick Ross was, I felt like he was great for that record on Scotty Beam. It, so- it sounds exactly like 
what I would have thought a Freddie Gibbs and Rick Ross collaboration would have sounded like. Look at me as a song I really liked. Uh, I skipped over God is Perfect, not because I don't like that song, but, you know, that's not a song that I go back to a ton, but it still works in the flow of the album. Frank Lucas with Betty the Butcher. Betty the Butcher is, was doing Betty shit. You know what I mean? Word. Freddie Gibbs, too. Uh, something to rap about. You mentioned with Tyler, the creator. Um, I know that's one of your, that was the first city year candidate for you. Yep. Um, Tyler surprised me, obviously. It's a verse that I go back to a lot. It's one of my favorite five or so verses on the album. Babies and Fools, Conway. This might be my favorite verse on the album, Conway's verse on Babies and Fools. And as you mentioned, they have great chemistry. Um, they're in a strip club together in the music video. Yep. <laughs> so yes. that lets you know about that. Um, Baby Shit is probably my favorite song on the album. And then All Glass is one of my favorite songs to close the album that I heard this year. So, And it's only 35 minutes. So, uh, uh, unexpected album. And I was a little nervous because I was like, damn, son, you don't want to marinate in Bandana a little bit more? Like, that was the classic. And it came out 11 years apart uh, from Alfredo. But, and it looks like Freddie Gibbs. 11, 11, 11, months, 11, months, 11 months apart, you mean? 11 months. What did I say? You said 11 years apart. Nah, 11 years, <laughs> 11 years ago, Freddie Gibbs was a way different artist. He was yes. rapping a baggy ass white t shirt to the Souls of Mischief joint. Uh, 93 to, to infinity. infinity. Very good freestyle. Which was a good Very freestyle. Good. I came, you know, I yeah. came, it's funny, I was on a Souls of Mischief trip the other, like, weeks ago, and then I came across the Gibbs freestyle for that, and I was like, oh, that was pretty good. Okay. Very good. That yeah. was Double XL Freddy, where I think he was still, uh, still in the streets, yeah. uh, as he says. Oh, uh, but he... yeah, one of my favorite projects that came out this year is number four, Freddie Gibbs, Alfredo, uh, Alchemist, and, you know, Freddie Gibbs is on a run right now. You know what I mean? He's been putting out great bodies of work consistently, and I think he cemented himself as one of the very best in the game right now. I definitely agree with that. All right, for me, number four was an album that came much later in the year. I'm trying to look at its release date. I believe that it was October 30th, actually. Uh, day before Halloween, this was released. I remember finding out about this, I think, two days later. Didn't even know it was going to be released. And some people have this as an EP due to its time. It is literally a minute shorter than Freddie's album and one track less in Alfredo. This is Common, A Beautiful Revolution Part 1. Mm. I think this album is really damn good. I think it's it is. Common's best work since B. And I love B. That is my Whoa. favorite Common since album. Since B? Yeah. That's 15 years. Yeah, that's so, my so so wow, you have this album over Dreamer to Be Dreamer Believer and what's the other really good album I like? Finding Forever. You're probably Finding thinking. Forever. The, yes. yes, I think this is the better. Heart, which I, I have the I, I, I think this is better cuz this is just like me, this is very focused. The songs are good. This is all out of common clearly inspired by the events that happened to some of the protests. This is beautiful protest music. This is beautiful awareness music. This is beautiful revolutionary music by Common, who still is spitting. Is Common spitting as good as he was in 05 on B? No. Now, this is all done with fantastic production, live production. I believe it's Kareem Riggins, Robert Glasper, forgetting else who worked on this album. So a lot of it is live production. Some really great features. Featured strongly throughout of this is a singer called PJ, who's really dope, and I want to check out more her music. She's on a lot of the hooks in this. She's really good. This is so good. My this album's so good. My daughter Simone likes it. They have the all the videos for all the songs live performed on, on Apple Music. She watches it all the time. Say peace. By the way, that's who Common wants. By the way, you can tell. Like, hey, <laughs> hey, I like it. She got Say Peace, which is the lead single off of this with Black Thought, who has does Black Thought stuff. Yeah, Just yeah. an incredible one of the best verses I heard this year on this song. Uh. There's a song after that, What Do You Say, which is a really good vibe song. A song called Fall On, kicks off the album. There's a song called A Ride In My Mind, which is a really great song with Lenny Kravitz, uh, who does the hook and is playing guitar on this. Stevie Wonder is also featured on this album. Now, the album, a lot of the length on the album comes from the intros and the outro being so long. So this is really a seven-track project, if you think about it. But the seven tracks are all good. They're good. There's nothing you want to skip here. This is good. I get this is not the lyrical complexity of common on B that you might have heard on the corner or It's Your World or Love Is, those kind of songs. No, it's not that. But this is really good. I will say I thought Common was really good on 
the project he did a couple years ago with Kareem Riggins. Um, I'm forgetting who else was. It was Robert Glasper on the August Green project. But I think this, he was a little bit more energized. He was a little bit more inspired. His flow was a little bit sharper than that. And there's a little bit more direction. But this came out of nowhere, and this made my top four. And this is sort of the shift album for me in the list. This is the album that sort of had made me have to decide, am I putting this above Alfredo and above From a King to a God? And this was the album that shifted, shifted me. And I think maybe it speaks more to me in terms of what happened in this year. And I see it as an album that I will go back to. I think a lot of the songs in this album are going to have strong replay value. Uh, I think the messages on it are stronger than the other, some of the other two albums I mentioned. And I think that's what gives it the, the notch here. And the production is just absolutely beautiful. I think the production on this, this is one of the most, you'll see the theme as we're getting here from four up. I think the production on all these albums are extremely strong. The song making ability is really strong. But Common, at number four, did not expect this to begin in this year, was not really checking for this. Now, this is also part one. I'm intrigued to see when Common will do a part two. Apparently, this is something he wanted to longer, but felt he needed to release this before the election. This was definitely good music to listen to before I went to vote. That's for sure. So, absolutely great job by Common. Intrigued to see what he does next with a part two, but this was really well done, and Common seemed revitalized as good as I've heard him in some years. So that's what I have at number four. Common, A Beautiful Revolution, part one. Oh, my God. Look, it, this should this not is be very stressful. Hard. This should not be stressful. This, this, is, this is very hard. Uh, like, I, like, I knew what my top albums were going to be, but flip two and three. I almost want to tie these two albums at two. But you can't. I almost want to tie them, but I'm not going to because I'm not going to be a bitch about it. Number three, it, uh, number three is Burden of Proof, Benny the Butcher. Ah. Yeah. I'm really trying to figure out. I'm really thinking about what you have at two because this is interesting. But go ahead. This is very interesting. Number th- number three, Benny the Butcher, Burden of Proof, Hit Boy production, the whole thing. And mm-hmm. we'll, we'll talk about Hit Boy in a second. 38 minutes, 12 joints. I know this is probably on your list, so I'm not going to go on and on too much about it. And I want to say, Common, another album that almost made the cut for me. I just want to say, because that was an album I really enjoyed. Um, And the song with Lenny Kravitz is probably my favorite on that album. Dope song. Um, But Benny the Butcher, with Bird of Proof, uh, and then Where Would I Go, another Rick Ross feature. Sly Green is a song that I've played probably the second most out of everything on this album. The song that I've easily played the most is One Way Flight. Oh, same, uh, <laughs> same here. Same here. That song's just I, too good. I don't even think it's the best song it's not, on the album. But it makes I me feel the best. The best. <laughs> the best song on the album is probably Thank God I Made It with Queen Nyjah. Uh, which is a great record, which was one of my favorite songs that I've heard. But with One Way Flight, it's just it's just hilarious. Like Benny the Butcher bars and Freddie Gibbs, they just make me fucking laugh in the song. And sometimes that's all you need, especially with the Clipper bar toward the end. <laughs> like I kind of like in the beginning, I remember listening to the song and we and you both talked about this. You look up and it's like two minutes and 20 seconds in. You're like, yo, is Freddie not going to rap? Because before his verse... There's this instrumental for like four bars, and you're like, yo, is he just gonna, like, you know, just do a hook or whatever? And then he comes in, fuck it, I, you know, whatever. I wasn't gonna like, do was a verse, first. yeah. And then, and then when I hear the, the verse back, and it's like just eight bars, I'm like, you know what? This is perfect. You know what I mean? Yep. I don't think it has the same effect if he just, if he does a full 16 or a 12 or whatever the case may be. I think it was perfect that he just did the eight because he also probably has the most memorable part of the song. Yeah, you know he has absolutely the most memorable bar in that song. And if you're a basketball yeah. fan, yeah, it's the most memorable bar yeah. in that song. Uh, Famous is great. Timeless has a great Little Wayne verse. It's unfortunate that it had to be a Little Wayne verse. Uh, New Streets is a good song. Over the Limit with Dom Kennedy is a nice feature. And, you know, Hit Boy getting Dom Kennedy that look was nice because he did a project with Dom Kennedy earlier this year before people were saying that Hit Boy should be in the producer of the year conversation. Uh, Dom Kennedy... He got a feature from Nas on that album, yep. uh, where Nas really just did the. But still, all in all, traded all. Thank God I made it. Like I mentioned, War Paint, uh, with the Griselda family, 
West Side Gun Conway, and then Legend with Hit Boy, which, you know, I'm glad that that's a song that he put a music video out to because I, f- I heard that and I was like, this song should get a video. It was one of the better songs to end a project this year. It pained me to only put it at number three. You'll know why, because I think if you know me, you can pretty much figure out what I have at number two. But it really literally came down to like last week and I was like, yeah. you know what? Now, now, now it dawned on me what you have at two. And now, now I'm like, I'm like, okay, I see. I kind of know what, where you went the rest of the way. And I think after my next one, it'll be very clear where I am the rest of the way. Although I think you probably have my top three figured out pretty much. I do actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So for me at number three, I went with a, a project that Brian had down at number six, which was Black Thought, Streams of Thought, Volume 3. I really like this project. I even struggled with dropping this to number four and putting Common higher than it. I really struggled with that for some time. There was a really strong debate for me, and I said this to you, we were talking about this before the podcast, between three and five for me. I thought I could have moved any one of those around and they could have gone in any way. But I settled on this for Black Thought because I thought comprehensively this was a really good project for him. Out of all of the streams of thought, this is the strongest because it's the one that feels most like an album thoroughly through. This one produced by Sean C of Sean C and LV. Most people know him for their work on American Gangster, Jay-Z's album. And this production's really good. The features are good, as, as Brian mentioned. Really good songs. A variety of styles and sound. You get some rugged stuff, some grimy stuff. State Prisoner with kicks off the album. Woo! Really good. Oh, my God. Bri- Brian talks oh about God. Thought versus Everybody, which many people heard during the early part of the pandemic when uh, Thought did this on the Roots YouTube channel. Or for NPR, excuse me. And he spit the verse, and I was like, wow, that's crazy. I mean, anytime. Is that the Ninth Wonder? Is that what Ninth Wonder production? No, that this is Sean C. Thought versus everybody. Okay. It's not, not, not that. But he, at the beginning of the pandemic, he did it on NPR. He did a Tiny Death Stay at Home, and he did some tracks off the album. There was one other song that didn't make the album that he, he performed there, but Thought versus everybody was one of them, and that's just a dope song. Black Thought spitting as sharp as ever. I mean, as Brian said, he's one of the best to ever do it. Still spitting better than anybody. He is somebody that I'm very excited for to hear. We talked to Static Select about how Fact Static's working on a project with him. We don't know if that'll be a streams of thought. We also know there is the danger, highly anticipated for any Roots fans or Black Thoughts fans, the, da- the Dangerous Thoughts project that is scheduled to come out next year that many people have been waiting for for a long time, including myself, Danger Mouse, and Black Thought. <sighs> That's going to be crazy. Probably one of my most anticipated hip-hop releases Ever. It's probably right below the Nas and Primo, which might be coming too. Uh hopefully mm. we'll hopefully we'll talk about that next year. I like if if I was gonna still gonna pause and say this right now in this podcast. If Nas does the joint with Primo and it drops next year, we will have an entire podcast dedicated to that album. <laughs> there will be an entire podcast <laughs> dedicated to that project. Dissecting it. And if it's bad, we'll say it's bad. But it is something I've been waiting for a long time. Brian and I love that co- combination. Brian and I might actually agree. I don't know if Brian agrees with me on this. We're not necessarily sure any rapper or producer has any better chemistry than those two. And that's why we anticipate that. That's a story for another day. That's oh, also pop- my number one artist and number one producer ever. So yeah. let me. That's, that's, a com- that's a story for another day or a podcast for another day. But Black Thought at number three for me was my strong choice. Now, I'm going to jump to number two because Brian talked about this project already. So I'll jump to my number two, which was Burden of Proof, Benny the Butcher. This was my second album, to get, best album of the year, uh, produced entirely by Hit Boy. I thought the production was fantastic throughout. It was a really interesting listen. I thought why this was such a good listen was Hit Boy gave you a little bit of variety for Benny. Benny is usually really excels over those hard, grimy beats, and these were slightly lightened up or given a little bit more soul in some of the songs, like Thank God I Made It or New Streets. Or, you know, uh, Sly, Sly Green, different things that had a little bit different of a sound to it that Benny really excelled on these beats. One Way Flight, another one. That is one of my favorite songs and most played hip hop songs of the year. Like Brian said, I agree with Brian, not necessarily the best song in the album, but it makes me feel the best, as I said. I really like the vibe of that song. My favorite beat. Easy. Yeah, le- one of my favorite beats of the year. Legend, fantastic song as well. Benny sounds as sharp as ever. It was nice to see Benny in a situation where he. There's a situ- there's times when I can listen to an artist and I could say, "Wow, 
that producer really got everything they could out of them in terms of giving them these beats and also the direction for these songs. Hit Boy clearly did that. I think we will also say that what we both have is our number one album of the year. There's something about shaping that concept, that focus. This was done here for Benny. I think this was good for Benny's career. I think this was good for his versatility and his sound. I had a homegirl of mine who never listened to anything of Griselda, never listened to anything of Benny the Butcher, and somehow came across Benny the Butcher. I don't remember how she did, but then she asked me, oh, do you listen to Benny Butcher? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh, I listen to his Burden of Proof, and I like some of his songs. I think the sound has diversified him a little bit, but it still had that edge. Sort of like what I was talking about on Conway's album, you still got that edge here, and it's a really well-produced album. And I think when people look back on Benny's career, and they might also say this with Conway as well, too, on From a King to a God. I think when you look back, you look at how these albums diversified them a little bit more sonically and showed a little bit more range of what they can do as artists. But Benny really shown on this. He easily could have been rapper of the year with a lot of his feature work and his verse on this album. This is a very tight and good project from Benny. It is something that I think will have high replay value. It's something I think I will revisit for a long time. I think it is the best Griselda sol solo project that has been released ever. Brian might have something to say about it, number two. But I think this is the best one. I think it's the tightest. I think it's the most complete. It's a great uh, conceptually. And Benny just did the damn thing. And Hip Boy did the damn thing. Because the beats are fire on this throughout. Just absolute flames, man. Like, if you haven't listened to this, you're going to like it. And I would say to anybody, if this, you want this to be your introduction to Benny, hey, this is a good way to be introduced to, to Benny the Butcher. But salute to Benny. Salute to Griselda. They had a fantastic year. And this album is just, just very high ranking for me in, in, in that range. So great job. Burden of proof. Benny Butcher, number two. I had that at number two was at one point of the year. And then, and then you I fucked switched. up. <laughs> I cha I cha I changed my mind multiple times, and I landed what at number shot. two, being from King to a God by Conway the Machine. It's just when it comes down to it, right? I just went back to that album, the second most out of any album I heard this year, so it should be number two. Yeah, like like I feel like that that that's pretty that's pretty simple logic there, right? It's just the album that I revisited the second most, uh, and, and listened to straight through. I had, I thought I had a skip or two when the album first came out. I really don't. Like when I go back and listen to it, I really don't. I have From King, which is my favorite song, to start an album this year. Um, it's just one verse, and you know I love the the WCW outro. Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, the intro, and then you know my favorite, my favorite part of the album. You can't hold me. I span the rollie and put it right on the hand of my homie. You can't control me. I try to, I try to rap like you know. I try to make my face. You know what I'm saying? Like, like do the whole Conway shit when I do it at home. But I'm not gonna try that here. Yeah, please um, don't. <laughs> Nobody wants to it's see not, that. It's not a bad Conway. I'm getting better at my Conway impression, but I'm not gonna do that because you know I might. Uh, I might have some visitors at the crib, and I don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, Fear of God, uh, number two. There's actually a song I really like. It's good to hear Dej Loaf. Dej Loaf is someone that I like, I enjoy, and someone I feel like who doesn't get enough credit for the way some of the newer acts sound. Uh, but that's a story for another day. Um, and she's also made. she also made uh, the theme song, or what became sort of the theme song or the official theme of On My Block, which is a series that I really enjoy on Netflix, a song called Changes, which I fucking love. Uh, so shout out to Dave's Loaf. Lemon, your verse of the year, Method Man. Yep. Was second for me in verse of the year after the Kendrick verse. So, I mean, hey, you know, we're right there. Um, Great Dwayne verse. Dumani, which you talked about. Uh, and, and damn, the production on this album with Eric Sermon, Hit Boy, Alchemist, DJ Premier, Derringer. Beat Butcher, Havoc. Oh my God. Like if you're like if you're not gonna go the one producer route, do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, then get your best joints from a lot <laughs> of really good producers. And Conway did that. Conway, you know, his album's right up there and the best produced for sure. No doubt yeah. this year. No doubt. Front lines is I think the individual song that I've played the most off this album outside of From King the Intro. I think Front Lines is a song that I've played the most. I kind of wish and I feel like if maybe I don't know if the pandemic has something to do with this, um, but I feel like that song should have a video. 
I would love to see a video for that record. Yeah, I think it would have been a good. I love I love that song. I think it's a great song. It's one yeah. of my favorite on albums. Anza with Armani Caesar, who had another album that came out that I really enjoyed. Uh Anza Armani C like you could tell like that was made for her to just sort of skate on and flow on or whatever. I I really enjoy that track. I actually like that after after maybe a few weeks or so, like that became one of my favorite beats on the album. Yeah, that was a song at first. I remember like not being like, oh, I feel about this. And then after a couple of listens, I'm like, yo, I love that. And I like I like Amani's verse on that. It's really good. So, yeah. Seen Everything But Jesus with Great Freddie song. Gibbs. One of my favorite songs this year. One of my favorite songs this year as well. Uh, the interludes, by the way, all work. Yeah, they shape. do. They do, man. And that's the they thing do. that I feel like. I feel like interludes can really help or hurt your album. Some albums that we thought were classics back in the day, we might look back on and be like, eh, there was a lot of interviews in that, like re- late registration. College dropout. Uh, those are two to come out. Out. You know, those are two of the notable ones, and this is why a lot of people like Graduation more than those albums, because yep. they weren't they weren't really skits on better, it. Better, better, tighter album. It is. And, a, and an example of skits that sort of worked is Capital Punishment, where there were like eight skits, but I feel like they all pretty much worked. Ooh, see, I feel definitely about that. That's story for another day. I wish he had cut them out, but that's story for another day. Although there are some, I will argue. I didn't need eight. They didn't but, eight, but there are some ones that are classic. Right. Like Packing <laughs> a Mac, right? Yeah. Like, like so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the words of Shay, and then Spurs three. Uh, Benny the Butcher has one of the best lines to close a record out of any song that came out this year, which is a direct jab at Takashi Six Nine. Right. Yeah, although, although being an indirect jab at everybody, uh, because you know there's a lot of other people that do that. Forever dropping tears, my song of the year, as we mentioned, Eric Sermon and Rock Waller produced that. El Camino did the hook, Jesus Crisis, which is a song that grew on me. I love and that And then song. nothing less with DJ. Nothing less with DJ Premier is a very good song to close the album. And the Deluxe, you know, has some joints as well. But, you know, we're mainly talking about the the main album, 14 tracks, uh, 49 and a half minutes, which I feel like <clears throat> is still like right at the edge of the sweet spot. I feel like you want to be between 10 and 14 joints and you want to be at like, you know, 30 to 45, 50 minutes of music, 50 if it's really good. But Conway from King to God, it's literally like a hair, like a small nose hair above a Benny the Butcher's album for me. Just because I have a skip on the Benny the Butcher album and I don't have a skip here. Okay. But like they're both really good. They're both damn near equal. Um, it, there are people calling them classics. I'm not gonna fight with you about it. You can do that. I don't know. I don't know if we have if we've had a classic this year. I. I I would I would allow for more time to sort of process that. I'll say we didn't have an instant classic, that's for sure. I, I do believe I will I, say that. I do believe there are instant classics. I don't think that this year has one. What we did have was really good albums and we're probably gonna have the same number one, but listen, like Conway really showed me something with this. Um and I'm looking forward to whatever whatever him and Benny do next because I'm like, if y'all can top this then forget it. Like, who knows? It's, look, it's hard making good music. We know this. This is a very hard thing to do. Uh, we'll get into our number one. We won't have a lot, lot to talk about because we've talked about this. We had a whole practically episode on this album. The number one album of the year for both of us. Yeah, It, it was pretty easy after it dropped for me. I remember talking to Brian the night we both listened to it. Uh, which, I was going crazy. Which, which for me... <laughs> We were both up to like almost four a.m. <laughs> yeah, I listened to it probably like two times no before the album that. this year kept me up that long. That long, <laughs> I just, it just grabbed me from the beginning, and that's Nas King Disease. Yeah, I mean this album was so good. This is not a lifetime achievement award in terms of the album. Like, oh, we the Nas did this, and we're so amazed at how he's still able to make good music. Like, no, this is a freaking good album. Production handled by We didn't by put him, the Lost Tapes 2 on our list. No. You know what I'm last saying? Last year. Like, this, this is... Yeah, we did not do that last year. This we is, didn't put Nasir on our list. No. This is a really good album. This is fantastic production by Hit Boy. This is fantastic song making by Nas. Over a variety of styles on beats. Nas sounding rejuvenated. Sort of in the way I've talked about with Black Thought and Common. Well, Black Thought's always been there. Never had fell off. But in terms of rapping or energy... I want but, Nas and Black Thought collab on one of their next albums. Yeah, I would re- I'd really like that to happen. Uh, Black Thought's even talked about that. Somebody he's wanted to work with. So this just really good album. Uh, tight from start to finish. King's Disease to open it. The Cure to end the album. Even the bonus track, Spicy. 
a really good fun track where you got the you got the hook uh that's fantastically done you got the video that was great look we talked about this at length Nas did the damn thing it's the best list in front to back for me out of any project this year is it leaps and bounds better than Benny or Conway I no I wouldn't say that but it's really good it's a strong 9 out of 10 at a minimum for me this is something I could see eventually being looked at as a classic for sure I think that down the road, I do not think it's an instant classic. I don't think that you can look at this album and say it doesn't have a lot of great songs or Nas songs that might crack your top 25 Nas songs. I think a lot of reasonable Nas fans would agree on that. But in terms of a nice album that just flows through, it's going to be memorable for that for me in terms of a Nas album. There's nothing you really can skip. It's a good listen. You can turn it on. It passes the cleaning, the, the house test. As I always say, you can put it on and you're not going to run across the room like, man, I got to go skip that. There's nothing <laughs> like that. There's no nut-ass interludes or anything ridiculous like that. And it's just, there's a lot of stuff that gives you a lot of good vibes of Nas throughout the years and then sounds you haven't heard of him before. And so this is just good. And Nas, again, there's times when you tell an artist seems focused and reju- rejuvenated and excited to make this music. And I do think a lot of that with this album, I have not spoke about a little bit, I think was just working with Hip Boy, getting in with a producer that he really likes, that was able to help with direction and sort of shape the way the album is going to be and maybe push Nas to get more out of him. Producers can sometimes be like, the great producers are like coaches in that way. And they sometimes see the vision for stuff before the artist sees it, but the artist has to go execute it. Nas executed, man. And, we, let's not forget, kicking off this album with Ultra Black was set the tone, which had me hyped for about two weeks because I did nothing but go around, drive, and play Ultra Black. Whatever I was doing for work, I was just playing Ultra Black because I had to let y'all know it's Ultra Black. Yeah. And yeah. look, look, just, just a fantastic album, man. I mean, a great production. I think in terms of Nas albums, you can argue that there are albums that Nas has made that I want to get to that. Better I than this. Get to that. Yeah. I knew you were going to get to this. And I'll transition to you on that that are better than this Nas album. But I think this is a really enjoyable listen that I think for most Nas fans will have very high replay value. Yeah, I want to get to that. Uh, first, I'm just going to echo something you said, just front to back. Front to back, is it was the cleanest listen to me yeah. that came out this year. Um, spicy being a bonus joint makes a lot of sense. And it was like, there were songs that you look at the track list and they might scare you. You know what I mean? Before, like before the album comes out, you're like, "Whoa, Don Tolliver and Big Sean, what's that gonna sound like?" Wait, he's getting Lil Durk. What's that gonna be? Bruce uh-huh. B, what's he gonna do here? The Firm, are they still in shape? Fabio Four and ASAP Fur, and they hit it out the fucking park. I uh-huh. remember listening to the album. I was the first time I finished hearing the album because I heard it right at midnight. I started. I got a head start on that shit because I remember I was like ten minutes ahead of you or something like that. Yeah. And I, I was trying not to text you like anything, spoilers or anything like that, like it's a series or whatever. And I remember 39 whatever minutes after and I had finished, I just started laughing. I just started laughing when the album finished. <laughs> I was like, this this motherfucker, like he's still, you know what I mean? Like it's crazy. Like this album came out and it was still really, really good. I remember I went to PA uh, probably in like September or so and I was hyped because Homeboy driving a car, we played King's Disease front to back twice on the way over. You know what I mean? Like, what? <laughs> like that's what it was. And, you know, it was an album that I listened to so much. Uh, from King's Disease, the intro track, Nas, there's something about a very good Nas album. He'll give you a great intro. The Stillmatic intro. Facts. The intro to, uh, what, Get Down, the intro to um, Godson. Godson. Yep. Uh, the Yomatic intro, which is great, and then New York State of Mind is the technical intro song. I think the message is the first song on it was written right. on I Am, which I think is a better project than some other people probably do, but that's another discussion for another day or maybe in a couple minutes. But that, where he just basically played his greatest hits off of first two albums, it's pretty arrogant, and I love that. Um, and you know, that's what it is money over bullshit, et cetera, et cetera. And Queens get the money, like, Queens get the money. Yep. no introduction, like, not a good Nas album 
will almost always have a great intro. Blue Benz, <clears throat> there's a part in the beat. I've never mentioned this to you, actually. There's a part in the beat, the sample, the, uh, the person screaming or whatever. I actually didn't catch that until like 10 times when I listened to the song. Really? I think I called it on like the 10th or 11th listen. Huh. I was like, never heard that in the beat until i don't know why i just never it just never like jumped out at yeah me. i caught that never. yeah and it made the beat better for me i don't know i like samples of uh, voices and shit charlie wilson's excellent on car 85 is so good ultra black like that that like yes he could have gone deeper in i guess the subject matter but i don't think the song was made for that nah. i think the song was made to be a celebration clearly you know what i mean cuz you can tell when Nas, i mean there are other parts of the album where nas really like on 10 points he really explores some of what he touches on here and i think keeping the surface level actually works and i think that if if the world was normal this would be something that would play in clubs and probably would have performed better on charts and things of that nature <clears throat> excuse me 27 summers is the best beat i heard this year so 27 That's, summers. I'm I'm fine with that statement. I'm fine. It's, I, we, it's, it's one one A is one way flight. So shout out to Hit Boy, our producer for of the year, as you mentioned yeah. in the last episode. Um, replace me, which is a song that really grew on me. It was probably my least favorite record when the song originally dropped, and then really grew on me. Don Tolliver. That's one of the better hooks that I've heard this year. He did an excellent job. I agree. Good music video to accompany the record. Till the War is One is one of my favorite songs, and Lil Durk's part on this record is one of my favorite yeah, things on the it album. Yeah, it works. It worked well. It absolutely worked well. All Bad, I'm so glad that him and Anderson Pack ah, did a Great on the hook. Yeah, love we that love song. Him. Love the song. We love Anderson Pack up here, and I can't wait for his next project. Definition with Brucey e. B is a quick. I'm glad it's a two-minute joint. Didn't need to do much more than that. He ah, just spit it, a 16 and talked around it. And it's, it, it explains the point of the album, more or less, right? Yep. Full circle, nothing needs to be said. AZ still a shape. Do or die too, I'm looking forward to that. Cormega, great verse. Um, and Foxy Brown, it was great to hear her again. 10 Points is one of my favorite songs on the album. I thought was a song of the year candidate. The Cure, I thought was a song of the year candidate. And Spicy, just a fun record. Just a fun record. Now, Fabio Ford's voice, not politically correct. But you know what? Oh. There, are some, there are some bars on that album that... We can discuss at a later time. Yes. <laughs> I'm ready to have that discussion. That's it for our albums of the year. Nas, King's Disease. We both had that at number one. This is also our final episode of the year of 2020. It's been a long year. We want to thank everybody for all their support in watching our video, sharing it, retweeting it, liking it on Instagram, supporting us on Patreon, everything that you do. All our people that have supported us from day one, behind the scenes, our entire Backpack Broadcasting crew. We want to thank all of our guests. Everyone for making... who DMs me after the episodes. Yep. <laughs> the, the people who thank, thank the guests for coming on. The people who have interacted. The people who have commented on YouTube. No matter what it is, people have, will have a lot of commentary on this. But we want to thank you for the support. We know 2020 has been hard for some people. It's been tough. People have had many ways of how they've tried to get through it. And we hope that you've been able to use this podcast to help you get through it in the best way that you can. Also, a huge thank out to our podcast studio and host Gotham Podcast Studio for their support throughout the pandemic and all that they continue to do. We will be back with more. We will be stronger than ever in 2021. We'll be growing it. New guests, a lot of new stuff in store, a lot of things that you guys have told us that you want to see, and we will continue to bring that to you, continue to bring you the real. So, for the last time for this year, and we look forward to next year, where we'll talk about a lot of new interesting things, including why I am no longer a fan of the New York Jets that will be coming up as part of discussion in 2021. <laughs> for the last time for this year, for Brian Fonseca, I'm Dexter Henry. Until next time, y'all. Peace. Peace.